Shalom. Welcome to Yeshiva Pirkei Shal Shanim on the Nativ Network. And uh, today we are going to be dealing with Mashiach again. Um, part, this will be part three. My name is Davon Mays. And I'm Tiago Borco. And we're going to jump right into it. <clears throat> so um, we've covered a lot of things so far. Some Messianic prophecies. Um, Isaiah chapter 11, Isaiah chapter 2. Um, today we're going to be dealing with Zechariah 14, which is a huge um, messianic prophecy. Um, there is a lesson on, um, there's a few, a, quite a few lessons on um, these end time prophecies on, on the T. Um, I've done a lesson on Zechariah chapter 12 on the T. You can check that out. And um, yeah, let's get right into it. So um See how jump in let and me go maybe. through it. Uh, yeah, so let me. Can I just quickly go through the chapter, then we'll come back to it. Sure. Okay. Behold, a day is coming for Hashem when your spoils will be divided up. Uh, in your midst, I will gather all the nations to Jerusalem for the war. The city will be captured. The houses will be pillaged and the women will be violated. Half of the city will go out into exile. But the rest of the people will not be eliminated from the city. Hashem will go out and wage war with those nations as he waged war on the day of battle. His feet will stand on that day on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives will split open at its middle, east to west, forming a very wide valley. Half of the mountain will move to the north and half of it to the south. And you will flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains will reach to Azal, and you will flee as you flee from the earthquake. That was in the days of Ozia, king of Judah. And Hashem, my God, will come. All of the holy ones will be with you. It will be on that day, the light will be neither very bright nor very dim. It will be a unique day. It will be known as Hashem's day. Neither day nor night, but it will be, but it will happen towards evening time that there will be light. It shall be on that day. Spring water will flow out of Jerusalem. Half of it will flow to the eastern sea and half of it to the western sea. This will be in the summer and in winter. Hashem will be the king over all the land. On that day, Hashem will be one and his name one. The entire land will change to, the, to a plain from Geba to Rimon, south of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem will become lofty. It will be circled in its place. From the gate of Benjamin to the place of the first gate, to the corner gate and from the tower of Hananel up to the king's winery. People will live in it. There will be no more devastation and Jerusalem will settle in security. Verse 12, this will be, a, a, this, this will be the plague with which Hashem will strike all the peoples that have organized against Jerusalem. Each one's a flesh will melt away while he is standing on his feet. Each one's eye will melt away in their sockets. And each one's tongue will melt away in its mouth. It shall be on that day that there will be a great panic of Hashem among them. Each one will grab the hand of his fellow and his hand will be raised up against the hand of the fellow, of his fellow. 
And also Judah will wage war against Jerusalem and the wealth of all the nations all around will be gathered. Gold, silver, and garments in great abundance. And similarly, and similarly will be the plague of the horse, the mule, the mole, the camel, the donkey, all the animals that will be in those camp, just like this plague. It shall be that all who are left over from all the nations who had invaded Jerusalem will come up every year to worship the king Hashem, master of legions, and to celebrate the festival of Sikot. And it shall be that whichever of the families of the land does not go up to Jerusalem to bow down before the king, Hashem, master of legion, there will be no... Let me see again. Okay, let me repeat verse 17 again. And it shall be that which, whichever of the families of the land doesn't go up to Jerusalem to bow down before the king, Hashem, master of legions, there will be no rain upon them. But if it is the family of Egypt that does not go up and does not come to Jerusalem, there will be no water for them. The same plague will come to pass with which Hashem will strike the nations that do not go up to celebrate the festival of Sukkot. This will be the punishment of the Egyptians and punishment of all the nations that will not go up to celebrate the festival of Sukkot. On that day will be written on the horse bells, holy unto Adonai, unto Hashem, and the pots in the temple of Hashem will be as numerous as the bowels before the altar. And it will happen that every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah will be holy unto Hashem, master of legions. All those who sacrifice will come and take from them and cook in them. And there will be no, no longer be any uh, merchants in the temple of Hashem, master of legions, on that day. So, um, just one clarification: this word Canaanite can be translated as merchant or businessman. So, when people read this, they're thinking, "Oh, well, God doesn't like Canaanites." When Israel <laughs> has a lot of Canaanite history. It can also be translated as businessmen, as you see in the, um, you're reading out of the Strong's, out of the, um, yeah. not the Strong's, the uh, Stone Edition Tanakh translated sure. that word as a uh, merchant, or in some translations, as businessmen would no longer be in the house of the Lord. So just to clear that up real quick. But uh, yeah, a lot to, lot to unpack here. Um, we can see. I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Now, this would be uh, referring to uh, Gog and Magog in Ezekiel 38 and 39, which is a, a messianic prophecy. Um, and it says they will, they will go forth and they will fight against Jerusalem, but they're not going to win, of course, right? Because it says God will be the one that then shall... Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. So just like he did to the Egyptians, he told Israel, you know, I'm going to I'm going to fight with you. I'm going to fight for you. He's going to help Israel fight off these nations. So we clearly see that this is physical. This is not a spiritual thing. These nations are physically going to attack Israel and um we, we dealt with last time that the New Testament talks about the kingdom does not come with observation, meaning there's nothing that you can verify. It's all in your mind. You won't see the things, even though there's all, so many things that it says you're going to see. You will see me return. You'll see me on the clouds when you see the kingdom of heaven and great power and all these things. But Luke says it's not going to have any observation. But clearly in this prophecy, it says, the Lord shall be king over the earth, and there should be one Lord in his name, one. It's not going to be a trinity. It's not going to be two gods. It's going to be one God. 
it's gonna yeah, be that's very powerful, eh? ahead. go ahead yeah i'm saying you know that verse it's it's very powerful it's one of the verse that convinced me you know it, it, it talks about a time that will come when everyone will acknowledge that Hashem is one and his name is one. It's not, it does not have many names. He has got only one personal name. Yes, other names can be attributed to what he can do for us. He's our healer. He's the provider, you know, all those other things. But when we talk about the name of God, the personal name of God that he has chosen for, for himself to relate with us, it's one. You know, it's the most revered name and that's why the Jews and even in the Noahide community, we do not just say that name. And that's why when I was reading here, it kept on saying Hashem, Hashem. But in fact, Hashem means the name, meaning it's referring to that sacred name that we cannot just be uttering no matter what, you know. And so this verse for me, it's, it's very powerful. If you look at it, it means at this moment, not everyone acknowledged that Hashem is one, God is one, and his name is one. Everyone comes with their own theory of how one can be divided by what and it becomes three. You know, it's not literal, it's symbolic. If you split it and, you know, it's... But there comes a time when everyone, everyone will stop messing up with mathematics. From when one can be three, you know, you come to acknowledge that one is one, three is three. Let's just stick to this. God is one. Yeah. <clears throat> there's there's no other. There's no other. I mean, I don't know how many times he has to say that phrase. There's none besides me. I know not one. I alone created heaven and earth. I mean, it's 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 it's, it's the, the 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 if you're gonna ignore the text, then I don't even know why you would even waste your time reading it. So it says. There shall be no more utter destruction. Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. So you have the, the Christian messianic Jewish community who tell you that you're already under the new covenant, but there's no peace under this covenant because it says I'm going to give you a covenant of everlasting peace. There's no covenant of peace. Jerusalem is not safely inhabited right now. You have terrorism going on over there. You have pride parades going over there. This, this is not a godly nation. Yeah, there's Jews in Israel for sure, from from many different uh, uh, backgrounds. There's Ethiopian Jews, Ashkenazi Jews, Persian Jews, Yemenite Jews. There's Jews all over Israel, but overall, it's a secular, secular, secular country. It's not a Torah observant country from top to bottom. The government is True. is very um, anti Torah. They're constantly trying to get people out of yeshiva. They're cutting you the money to you, the yeshivas. So we see that none of these things have happened yet. This war has not happened yet. And it says that uh, it's, it, it pretty much describes a nuclear bomb. It says, and, there, <clears throat> and this shall be the play wherein the Lord will smite all the people that I fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand on their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. Now, we can talk about chemical warfare. We can talk about a nuclear blast, but this is something devastating. Devastating. Yeah. This is very, this is devastating. Um, and it says, Judah shall fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of the heat them around about shall be gathered, gold, silver, and apparel in great abundance. Sounds just like Egypt again. When they left Egypt, they left with a lot of things. This has not happened. Um, the, one of the biggest things, all the nations that came against Jerusalem shall go up year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Well, according to the New Testament, the law is over with. Why are people going to keep these tabernacles if the law is over with? Hey. And if you go ahead. No, no, I'm saying that's a that's a very valid question. Yeah. It's it's right there um, in the text, right? Yeah. So uh, denomination that I came from, we used to say, ah no, all these things were uh shadow of things to come. 
you know, they were pointing, they were pointing to GC, JC. They were not, he came to fulfill all these things. Now that he came, we don't longer need to keep one, two, all these, um, you know, feasts. They are gone. They were only pointing to him. And, but no one really questioned us deeply to say, what do you mean by there were shadow of things to come? You know, and um, so I know that even within that denomination, there are people even today that try to keep, to, to still be part of that denomination while they're trying to keep the feast according to their own understanding. And it's, it's very interesting. And it, it really doesn't work because if, if that's the case, if, you, if you're going to spiritualize everything, then <laughs> you, 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 you start playing a very dangerous game of this is physical, that's spiritual. This physical, that's spiritual. You know what I mean? Um, the third temple. And again, there's another lesson on the third temple on the T, but it's clearly going to be a third temple. And that day there should be upon the bells of the horses, holiness unto the Lord and the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Well, the Lord's house, we have an altar. We have, it says, and all they that sacrifice shall come and take them and cook in them. We got sacrifices. We have altar. We have people going to Jerusalem to keep the feasts, the law, the Torah, the temple, all these things are going to come back. There's no getting around that. And as far as messianic prophecies, this is one of the most important ones because Israel has many, 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 many enemies. In Psalm 83, it lists all the, na all the nations that have a problem with Israel to destroy it. And they're all going to come against Jerusalem and they're not going to win. Mm. And we don't see that this has taken place. So you have what's called a preterist. We have partial preterist, we have full preterist. And a preterist is somebody who believes all the prophecies have been fulfilled. And this is a Christian you know, idea. Well, when did all these things take place? So what they'll do is they'll spiritualize it. You know, he came back in your heart. <laughs> right, <laughs> he, he returned in your heart. You know these things are again; they, they're just shadows. They're not literal. I mean, you you can't live in a place that's you know it says Israel will be inhabited safely. Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. Spiritually speaking, that sounds good, but if it's not a physical place to go to that's safe, you know, that, that's, that means it, that's, not a, that's not a reality. That's, an, that's a concept. That's an idea. If I still got to get on a bus and worry if a terrorist is on the bus, I'm going to blow it up. That's not dwelling in safety. That's living in fear. That's, that's not the reality of the Messiah. The whole point of the Messiah is to bring in world peace, like it says in Isaiah chapter 2. So, we see uh, Zechariah 14 clearly dismantles the whole concept of the New Testament's version of the new covenant in the messianic era that you can't be under a new covenant. For one, Israel, all 12 tribes are not back in the land. Nobody has gone up to worship the Feast of Tabernacles. All the nations have not done that. It, we, we have mass media. This will be all over world news. There's no third temple. This will be all over world news. These things have just not happened, just not have happened yet. I mean, they're, they're, they're not something has taken place because it, we can verify these things. These are not beliefs. These will be something that we can prove. You can see it. You can go there yourself. So um, unless there's anything else you want to uh, cover, Tio. Yeah, so I was saying, if uh, the viewers want to know more about uh, the battle that we're talking about, the Gog and Magog, they can actually sh look at uh, um, Zechariah, uh, not Zechariah, Ezekiel chapter 38 and I think 39. 
Yeah. They, they go uh, deep into the, the Gog and Magog. I think here it's just covered very in, in, in small chunks. But if you want to have deep understanding of that, you can go to Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39. Yeah, and um, what we'll do next week is we'll cover Mashiach Part 4. Yeah. Four and yeah. um, we have um, a, a write-up from the team that we'll go through uh, uh, a PDF. And we'll, we'll basically show you how the rabbis understood these things, um, how they understood how this is going to unfold. Uh, we talked a little bit about Mashiach ben David, Mashiach ben Yosef. A um, lot of lots of information on the team on that. Um, uh, Rabbi Singer has been dealing with uh, the Mashiach ben Yosef and Mashiach ben David um, on his YouTube page. Um, there's a, there's there's lots of information and resources to deal with these topics. Open up your Tanakh. There's messianic prophecies, you know, all over the Tanakh, and these these are going to be something that's that's handled in reality. These are not going to be beliefs. You're not going to have to believe the Messiah is here. You're going to be able to see somebody sitting on the throne yeah. of David. Sure. This is not going to be... Um, uh, There's no need to believe when it's there. I mean, Exactly. You know, you don't believe that you are in your house. You know you're in your house. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, with that, um, we will see you guys next week. And um, thanks for joining us and uh, shalom, shalom. Thank you very much. Shalom.